so funny because you guys keep recommending all sorts of distros now that I, I feel like I'm obsessed with Linux a bit. Catchy OS, uh, Fedora, Pop OS was one of them. Listen, Fedora is actually like the best for the G14. And this right here that you guys are seeing right now is the laptop I used last year for seven months as my daily device. But this, this right here, well, this is the new G14 with a new OLED panel that I will talk about later. But the matter of the fact is that I think I've lived with one long enough to know what actually matters. In fact, I kind of miss it, to be honest. I think this would have made a great Linux machine for me, but because I review devices for a living, it makes it so hard to stick with them. But you know what's interesting this year is that, uh, well, Intel has entered the room again. But let me condense my experience with my AMD based G14 to, to paint you a broader picture of what it's like to genuinely own a laptop like this. Living with a G14 has been less about specs on paper and more about learning its rhythm over time. After roughly seven to eight months of daily use, traveling with it, docking it at home, leaving it plugged in for days and pushing it through work, the G14 has proven itself as genuinely flexible, a flexible machine, not a fragile gaming laptop. Battery life was never MacBook level, but once I stopped chasing stock profiles and dialed things with G Helper, it became predictable and very usable. Like in lighter workflows with Chrome heavy browsing, calls, docs, and some background apps, I consistently saw around six to seven hours with roughly a 27 to 30% drop over about two hours of real use, if I remember correctly. I do remember in heavier mixed days, starting at around 8 a.m. with, I don't know, higher brightness, keyboard backlight on and speakers up and multiple apps running like Notion, YouTube, Docs, light scripting and file management, I could get close to five hours before needing a charge and then docked most of the time via USB-C. Well, the battery health uh, held up better than I expected to, sitting at around 96% capacity after months of use, which tells me that charging behavior hasn't been nearly as damaging as maybe some people fear. Then came thermals. Thermals have honestly been one of the biggest surprise. With a tweaked silent profile that I had, the laptop can sit docked at around 45 to 46 degrees for hours without fans kicking in, and even under load or gaming while docked. Temps stayed in a controlled 70 degrees Celsius, more towards 80, you know, maybe sometimes it would touch 90 if you were like really gaming for a long time. Physically, I didn't baby this thing. I don't baby my tech because of the pure fact that I need to show you guys how things degrade over time. So it's been on planes, bags, rubbing against buckles, cameras rubbing against it. This has been like everywhere. And while the aluminum chassis picked up scratches and a few deeper marks exposing some bare metal, nothing structural degraded. Ports stayed right, the keyboard showed no real wear, and the trackpad felt the same as day one. And also my, my keycaps haven't been yellowing, so that's good. And then about six months in, I decided to open it up. Internally, even after leaving it running on a dusty desk for days at a time, opening it up revealed surprisingly little dust. Also, the OLED display still looks incredible months later. Now looking at my P16, I'm a bit mesmerized at how Asus sort of pulled a very similar display. But the old G14, it still has true blacks, sharp text, great contrast. Not a fan of the gloss on the panel though. I've actually never really been. It's a bit annoying at times. Honestly though, I think over time, over the past seven months I had the laptop for, the G14 stopped feeling like a MacBook alternative and more of like a, a laptop that adapted to my own workflow. You know, whether I had it docked as a desktop, uh, it was portable enough for planes, powerful enough for DaVinci and photo work, and configurable enough that I could choose when I wanted silence, efficiency, or performance modes. And you know, it's not perfect, solder RAM still bothers the heck out of me, but living with it long term made one thing clear. 
This isn't a laptop that impresses you in one week and disappoints later. It's one that makes you realize day by day how good it is at doing a lot. And you might be wondering, okay, well, you know, if the G14 is such a perfect laptop, then what's the point of changing it? What's new? What's making it even better? Well, for starters, the one real difference here is the screen. Mind you, the panel was already good prior to this refresh, but the new panel is noticeably better with more consistent quality. I mean, you can tell in the colors, it's still OLED. However, it's just tuned better. Asus calls it Nebula Display. In short, this just means that Asus is certifying how good that OLED panel is and how it behaves. So you get 1,100 peak nits of brightness in HDR, way better factory color accuracy and stricter quality control, which in my opinion is really good because there are quite a few people online dealing with screen issues. And I'm extremely happy to say that reflections are much better, like, like much, much better. Like if you saw my review of, of the G14, the weird bluish coated reflection was minimized by quite a lot. As for the chassis, it's different. The most noticeable thing here is the top lid. The slash lighting is now a, a lot more subtle. It's very clean. And with Armory Crate being worked on consistently, it really makes it easier to change colors and so on. The same goes for the keyboard, which has, for the most part, stayed the same. However, there are a few little differences here, like uh, the Armory Crate logo being added now. The brightness logo as well as the fan logo was all kind of redistributed on top. Some logos were also taken out and the LED backlit keyboard diffuses light uh, a lot better. There's also been a small little reduction in speaker grills. Power button is also smaller. Part of the hinge has also been uh, reworked on where you'll find this rubber material within the Zephyrus logo. There's also no more LED indicators, which I found useful. Useful because sometimes as you're configuring Linux or you're playing around with things, you might get occasional black screens as you're, you know, playing with the terminal or breaking things. So having the LEDs comes in uh, pretty clutch, just to see if your laptop is sort of on. And the entire bottom lid is different, mainly because the cooling system is also different. Like the beef top uh, models have a tri-fan system. Battery is also set to deliver faster charging, up to 250 watts fast charging on some Intel configurations and 200 watts fast charging on AMD models. And so really, it's a slight improved version of uh, what I had. But I think I wanna try my best to get my hands on one to, to try to you know play with Linux on them because this was indeed my favorite laptop last year. The bad thing is that, well, what I have right here this model right here is an engineering sample, so I can't really test anything at all, actually, which is kind of a bummer. But the good news is that, well, um, now in 2026, AMD and Intel run uh, Linux really well. So whatever you end up choosing here, it won't matter uh, if you wanna install Linux on it. The really interesting thing, though, is that Panther Lake is looking promising, which is exactly what you'll be finding in here. Listen, there are so many rumors online surfacing about Panther Lake, and it's quite uh, sad because I can't just benchmark this and show you the numbers. Whatever this will throw at us won't be accurate, so there's like really no point. However, it seems like this won't be a small refresh for Intel. It combines ideas from previous architectures, like you guys remember Lunar Lake and Arrow Lake? Well, those are built on Intel's advanced 18A process. Still to be seen how this will perform, but the interesting thing is that A18 is set to deliver the same performance, but at lower power, or more performance at the same power. And all of this means, you know, better battery life and better thermals. I think this is part of a broader shift driven by how competitive AMD has become, so that's good. Anyways, listen, this here is a 28 watt chip with 16 cores and a new XE3 iGPU. It's too early to tell, you know, uh, how this will perform. I really want to try my best to get an Intel unit and take a look at what's going on. Uh, to be fair, it's, uh, it's my favorite Windows laptop. I will say that confidently. 
especially because of the form factor and power output is so good and battery life was very decent for a windows laptop with top components really like think about it this has gaming components within the g14 you know it's a windows laptop that i will most likely be transforming into a linux machine once i get my hands on the new one something i could also do with the rog zephyrus duo for example yup imagine a g14 with two screens like with two 3k oled rog nebula panels running at 120 hertz and you can even pair that with a 5090 if you want it to. It's like a portable workstation for everything, really. I think they kept it as thin as possible, coming in at uh, 0.77 inches, if I recall, and weighing like 6.2 pounds. Then comes uh, one of the laptops I will be talking about tomorrow, the Flow Z13. This could save gaming for us, really. And it's more because of the AMD chip it's got within, with a unified memory architecture. Super interesting because at 128 gigabytes of RAM, it practically shares that memory across all of its components. I'll explain and talk about it tomorrow, but it's wild. There's also, of course, the G16, which is practically a bigger G14 for those who want more screen real estate. And then the ROG G1000 desktop, this thing is clearly built for maximum performance, airflow, and upgradability. It's like the Lamborghini, I guess, of, of desktops. The craziest thing here, though, is the tri-zone airflow design. It separates the chassis into three thermal domains. It's actually really cool. But, uh, you know, out of all of this, my heart is on the G14. It's my favorite one. And like I said, I'm going to try my best to get one. I will be installing Linux on it because it's what I've been enjoying the most recently. I heard really good things about the Linux integration with the G14 from one of you guys. So I'm either going to be installing Pop! OS on this or Fedora, but it seems like most of you have been recommending Fedora. So I think that might just be the way to go. I will also be getting an Intel version, unless you guys want an AMD version, of course. Or maybe we just wait to see how much of a success Intel has been or will be. I think I just want the perfect setup though, to get as much power efficiency as possible while still being able to game from time to time. And of course use DaVinci to edit. I think my main pet peeve however is that the fact that I can't seem to use Adobe apps at all on Linux kind of just kills me. And no, I don't want to use cloud-based apps. so. I'm totally against that. If you guys have any comments or anything to say about the G14, let me know down below. If you guys have any recommendation of what distros I could potentially install this to make my experience really good, also let me know down below. I think honestly, for the most part, these laptops start getting really, really interesting once you install Linux on them. <music>